So I've got something a bit different for you guys today, and for a long while, uh, you've probably seen me uh, complain about my channel and saying that I don't want it to be just content where, you know, it's a talking head, and I'm not able to put any kind of um, demonstration content out for you guys to see and learn from. And uh, it must have been a couple of weeks ago that I put a post out on the community bit asking if anyone would be willing to essentially be my guinea pig um, for my channel where I can essentially demo the kind of coaching work that I do with guys. And that would be where I would film them on the streets of London and then ultimately give them feedback afterwards. Now, Bilal was one of the first people to actually get in contact and um, an offer himself as the guinea pig uh, for the channel, which I am incredibly appreciative of as well. And um, I thought, as we are gonna be making this video, it'd be good to also just give you guys a bit of insight into like where Bilal is at. And I think it'd be useful for me as well sure. um, to kind of know like what got you into it, where you're at with stuff, uh, and definitely kind of the, the sticking point. So without actually giving you just this bundle of, of questions all in one go, um, yeah, d tell, me, tell me a bit about yourself. What's your, been your journey in, uh, into doing all the pickup stuff? Great, well, thank you Dan for the introduction and thank you Dan for, for showing me around. Um, and yeah, th thanks for having me guys over uh, across on the other side. So in terms of who I am, I I've known about pickup for around 10 years now. Um, so 10 years ago, I'm sure Dan would probably agree, uh, it was really, really kind of strong in terms of the pickup scene, uh, at least in London. So we had guys like Yad, um, rest in peace Tom Carrero, and other kind of day game coaches, as well as night game yeah. coaches. All right, just carry on. Uh, I'm just there. And I really got quite interested. At that time, um, I was a little bit younger, um, more black hair. So I was, about, I was 19 when I actually found out about it. And I actually just saw a YouTube video. So you're about 29 online. at the moment then? 29, there you go, there you go, there you go. Dan's maths is much better than mine, <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, but anyways, uh, really in terms of what happened is I met a couple of guys in the community and what we would do is, I was actually at university at the, at the time, I believe it was the second year of uni, and I would literally spend hours upon hours in terms of gaming. Um, one thing I realised is, you know, it wasn't worth spending, you know, that long doing it, but in terms of what's happened so far, I think with... With, with game, it's made me um, quite a, quite a well-rounded person in terms of having hobbies and interests, but it's also developed me in terms of you know going to the gym, looking after myself, developing a bit of a career as well. So I am very, very thankful for that. Uh, in terms of where I'm at at the moment, I actively actually still game to this day. So I've been in and out of it for the last five years, okay. but in the last, at least 2024, uh, this, I would say, since I would say about April, I've been gaming quite actively. So when I say that, I mean probably about three or four times a week. Oh right, okay. yeah, um, so I was going to ask you then, like, how frequently are you going out and practicing? And out of curiosity, what was the reason for the break as well? Was it like you got yourself into a relationship, or you kind of like had enough? You're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with the results yeah, I'm yeah. getting, and you're like, oh, I need a break. From you. That's a good. That's a really good question. So in ter just in terms of the first one, at the moment, I'm going out three or four times a week. I still I find it incredibly difficult to actually go out every single day. And if I go out every single day, I feel a little bit burnt out. So yeah, yeah, I find for me, it might be different for other guys watching or, or yourself, Dan, but three or four times a week is, is actually a sweet spot. It's kind of like the gym. You try and do it, keep it set set days, try and do X number of approaches. That's, that's how I kind of do it. Uh, in terms of why I kind of... Um, why I kind of left it um, was I was feeling a little bit burnt out. I would go out quite quite often. I wasn't getting you know the results I wanted. But at the end of it, I did actually get into a relationship. So it's a combination of multiple factors. Yeah. Uh, and I was just making. Well, was that excuses. from the street or, or from it was it was or? actually from cold approaching. So it makes it sound more gangster if I say from the street. From the street, yeah, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> only thing missing is just the rap video, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, but no, really, like. From the street, in terms of results, I've probably had about eight or nine ladies from, from, that have actually been girlfriends. So um, it's not amazing uh, pickup um, all star level. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to admit that. But. But, but you know what? That that sort of stuff, though, it doesn't really matter. It's yeah. um, it's very much in each to their own experience. Like so many guys 
any way, I think, compare themselves to dating coaches. Yeah. But even then, the coaches don't have this, you know, crazy, mind-blowing sex life as much yeah, yeah. as, like, like, some people believe. I mean, unless they are really, really involved in doing it all the time and they are the sort of coach who says, right, I, I'm so addicted to doing pickup, I will do it 10 hours a day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm only looking for fun and, you know, and, and so on. And yeah, they just yeah, constantly yeah, cool. are putting themselves in those scenarios. Even then, like, I have not known coaches to still be having, like, like three, four yeah, days yeah. and, and course, stuff course, a week, course, you know. Course, course. It's, um, it's still, I mean, and it's a lot, lot of time as well as money that, that goes into all of these sort of Absolutely. dates. Um, but I think it's good to just always have those kind of realistic expectations yeah. that I, if, if, you're, if you're someone who wants a girlfriend, then just decide, right, how many dates a month do I really need to be going sure, on? And, sure, you know, sure, sure, sure. But that's, that's good. That you, so you, you've got yourself into a relationship from, from cold approaching and, uh, and then... Yeah, it sounds like as well you have the burnout, which is typical. And yeah. Every guy has that. They've done it for so long. Maybe for whatever reason, they've either had good results or they haven't had good results. They get a bit bored of either saying the same kind yeah. of things on the street as well, yeah. or maybe even wandering around the same areas. That yeah, 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 yeah. you know, it's no wonder that people do get fatigued. From Absolutely. It. What do you think your sticking points are? As I think. Well? Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I think sticking points. I still, even after you know number of years doing it I still feel I eject quite early in, in certain sets if it's going well and I think that can be more a psychological sabotaging mechanism where I might think um, I'm not I'm not good enough for the girl you know so I think that is a that is a sticking point and just um, I, I would say just making the conversations a bit more interesting uh, you, you alluded to a great point is sometimes when you get burnt out you might stick to the same old tried and tested routines yeah I think yeah. I'm probably the most guilty culprit of doing that oh is, we all are yeah. I, you, I mean we're, it's the same when um, people hear like their favourite joke sure um, every time you meet someone new you're still going to use that same joke yeah, you might yeah, get yeah. better with the delivery of it and the pausing and, uh, and, uh, and the punchline as well but you know, our scripts, our natural scripts are still somewhat limited. Sure. There's very few people that I know who can have like a very, very, very different conversation with every single different person that they meet. Um, yeah. But ultimately, I think, yeah, with this kind of area, yeah, it's very easy to get bored. If you're always having that same five minute interaction You're right, with someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ask the same things or you do say just the same particular topics or statements or yeah, jokes it's or something. Yeah. But yeah, you can you can most certainly get that burnout from it. Perfect. Okay. perfect. So so conversations you feel that you would get a little bit stuck with and also you you feel that sometimes you kind of eject yourself out of situations. I, I, I do eject and I just to let everyone know, I game solo. So um, I don't wing. Um, I should actually go out with a person I think that would actually just give a bit more impetus in terms of us approaching but I think one of the advantages of doing solo is I can actually approach by myself yeah so I've been doing very admirable to be able to do that Um, I mean everything has its pros and cons Um, approaching on your own has its pros and cons and also approaching with a friend or a wing or whatever absolutely also has its pros and cons Um, with people who go out and approach with someone else I mean the, the dangers that they find is that reliance on having someone else go. around yeah, them go, yeah. that then they feel that they can't go out and approach because they need that they need that, that person, support yeah, yeah, they yeah, need yeah, that yeah. comfort blanket to, yeah, to tell yeah. them look yeah. it's okay for you to go and do <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah. Um, even though when you're going in to talk to someone you're doing it on your own you're not bringing your friend in yeah, yeah, into yeah. the interaction uh, as well it's just you literally doing it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but even then I, and I, I wonder do you find then when you are going out on your own that you get to a point that it kind of feels a bit lonely as you're doing it, and then you, you feel maybe like your energy burns out a bit faster. It, 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 it does. It does. I kind of do my sessions as I kind of view it as like a sprint. So I don't go out, you know, five six hours. Unfortunately, I don't have the time. But when, when I do go out, I go out between two to three hours. Okay. Um, so what I try and do, I try and do an approach in the first ten minutes, and sometimes the first set always dictates how the session is actually going to going to occur. Sure, but in terms of answering your question when it comes to loneliness you do because sometimes you might not be getting the best reactions 
and you might have you know a friend or a ring saying look don't worry just go on to the next one so it's almost um, it's that uh, statement that a lot of dating coaches use state management just managing your own kind of emotions I'm a pretty stable guy but sometimes uh, when you're by yourself um, it's a very difficult thing to do a cold approach by yourself that's what I found yeah well again I think it's good that you've got a very sensible approach to, to doing this yeah. um, you know I mean I've, I know I've mentioned it in like other videos or we mentioned it before yeah. about like the idea of having a sabbatical or having just short term yeah, yeah, or long term yeah. strategies with, with doing approaching and you know, knowing when to, to go back to normal life. So I think it's really great that you're balancing that with normal life and not yes. guessing that you've got friends and family outside of, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, doing all of this. So if anything, that actually does play or work in your favour when you're approaching because that doesn't pull you into what I would dub as the, uh, the, the pick-up paradigm. Okay. Where you're... So, so by that, that's where, like, guys who are obsessed with doing pick-up... Sure they start using just solely pickup language. Okay. And it, it starts, what, what happens by, with that as a ripple effect is that all their conversations become very strategic. Okay. Um, and then they look at every interaction as like a strategy, like, oh, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna say X, Y, and Z, okay, I'll give and you. it's gonna be structured like this, and when she says this, I'm gonna say this kind of line or joke or, or yeah. ask them, you know, it, it has kind of this, this sort of weird strategy to it. Whereas at least if you are balancing that with normal conversations with people, yeah, yeah. then believe it or not, you just naturally remember to have normal conversations with people. So even if you are just using um, what we'll, we'll deem as a pickup opener, yes. even if it's just a, excuse me, I saw you, I think you're really nice, as a very you know, vague, simple example, you know that after that, you can have just a normal conversation with someone. You're, right, you're yeah. not going to start thinking, what's the next line or script that I can use yes. that's going to help me out here there you go, to yeah, have yeah. a conversation or, or get results so yeah, yeah. so that does play in, in your favour uh, I will definitely say but with all the other things that you've said I mean it will be interesting for me to actually observe and see how you do when you are approaching yes that's the most um, I, I know with the weather I mean you guys aren't going to see it but I mean the weather has kind of been rainy and then sunny and stuff so um, definitely to give allow the benefit of the doubt if it does rain um, and if like we do need that umbrellas and stuff, <laughs> sure. I, I will certainly cut you some slack, especially when it comes to the feedback side of yeah. things, because um, it's, doing cold approaching isn't easy for, for people of course, to begin yeah. with. I mean, it's a very unpredictable, lottery-like experience. You can have good days, you can have bad days. Exactly. You can have people in good moods, bad moods, and, and so on. Very, yeah. Um, and I think, in a way, it's also kind of tied with the weather <laughs> as well. So, you know, I, I will absolutely give you the benefit of the doubt if we find that, if it does start raining or spitting or whatever, that if people aren't quite stopping for you and, and this, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you some slack. Okay. Uh, I still like to be strict with people and give like proper feedback yeah, when yeah, it comes to like sitting afterwards. Um, but I am a lot more sympathetic that it's not always easy because it's like someone throwing a spanner in the works and, and saying, right, here's an extra hurdle for you to climb over there you go, yeah, so yeah. you can get results. Um, and I also assume you, you've never been filmed before, so this will actually be your first time for yeah, you actually to yeah, yeah, have yeah. a camera actually, on you whilst you're approaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to um, not think about it too much. Um, but, you know, Dan's a professional. Yeah, sorry, I always so, stress you. Yeah, he's always stressed me out. But, yeah, I, I think it's going to be an interesting experience. And I think, you know, um, doing the pickup will be interesting how, how I'm going to be feeling at the moment. And then, obviously, the, the analysis will be really interesting. Actually, the whole purpose of the camera is actually to see how you come across in interaction. So that, I think, will be the most interesting thing. So it's almost like... Um, you know, it's a scientific experiment, hopefully in the right direction. <laughs> well, the, the way in how I usually describe it to people yeah. is, when, especially when it comes to watching your footage back, it's a, a little bit like having an out-of-body experience. Because you're going to be seeing what you look like from a third-person perspective. Okay. And it's a very different feeling. So obviously when you're kind of like living, uh, I think the word is, is objectively. Subjectively, I'm sure it's third person. But it's a very different experience when you're living through that first person perspective. When you're seeing everything from your point of view. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, you, and people always wonder like, oh, well, what do I look like when I'm doing this or that? So you certainly become a lot more aware of your bad habits and yeah. mannerisms and stuff. Sure. Because you might notice things that no one else might suddenly pick up on. 
and and this is something that I really do like with um, with like being able to like film stuff because you can learn so much about yourself through the footage and every coach that I filmed with and even like their clients as well but everyone that I film with has dramatically improved their their style or way of doing their approaching because they've been able to be very critical over themselves definitely more so than I've been able to be critical okay. of them and say like oh I've seen what you've done here you need to change this or that but when you notice things that you don't like it's amazing how when you go out and then actually start approaching people you will instantly like, like honestly like pick of their fingers you will instantly be like I don't know what I'm doing there right I need to change that oh wow okay. and you will, you will start fixing stuff very yeah. quickly yeah. 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 so absolutely after you watch the footage that will be I think the most interesting time for you as the weeks go on for you to practice going out and going solo how are the results after you've now witnessed your your bad habits yes, and, and yes. mannerisms and even the things that you talk about in conversations so just as an idea what I tend to look for especially when I, I do give feedback to people is I tend to look at three particular areas so the first one is body language second is linguistics yeah. and the third one is structure of content so body language is essentially how you're presenting yourself to the women how are you standing what's your posture like um, it always amazes me when I see people standing in the, the, in the same way of their favourite coach <laughs> as well. It always makes me laugh. I, I know um, over the years when I've walked down like Oxford Street and I've seen people like have their toes up and, and I'm like, oh, I know, I know you got that from old, yeah, old Tom Torero or, yeah. or another coach or if they stand with their arms crossed or like hands in yeah, their yeah. pockets, excuse me, you know, in a certain way then um, you know it always kind of makes me laugh with that so I, I will kind of observe all of that and it just also allows me to get an idea of what I think would be a much more natural body language sure, for you sure. um, for some people I think kind of overdo it they try a little bit too hard to look confident and stuff and actually it just kind of looks a little bit odd yeah, yeah. so that would be kind of one area that I'll look at Linguistics, um, so speed of speech, vocal tonality, um, the pausing and whatnot even, things like that, sure. so I can get an idea of are you speaking clearly enough to the women, yep. can they hear you, um, are you speaking in a seductive way to them as well. Um, believe it or not, it's not so much what you say, it's how you say it. I've heard that, yeah. Um, uh, and I learned that many years ago when I trained uh, with Hezia back in 2009. Oh, wow, well, okay. Uh, and this is, go this is going back a long time when she was a, a coach at PUA training. Yeah, sure. Um, and she taught guys, I wonder if she still probably does it now, but she taught people um, how to be seductive talking about their breakfast that they had in the morning. And that exercise stuck with me for easily the last 15, 16 years because it works so well that if you can remember it's not what you're saying but how you're saying how you it, say it. Okay. that is how you can very much build seduction and attraction with people. Okay. You know, and if you almost start thinking about your favourite romantic movies, and, and this does sound a bit woo-woo, but if you, if you think about your favourite romantic movies, and how the actors, you know, sound like they're smitten by the, yes. the people they speak yeah, yeah. to, or how they're like so like in love with the person. Yeah. You know, it, it's amazing how you can play with your words and actually sound more seductive with that, and the, just the results that you can get, yeah. or how much more confident you can sound from that. Um, so definitely, there'll be there'll be that as well, and then structure of content is kind of the no-brainer. It's essentially the conversations that you're having with people. Does it have a natural flow to it? Does it kind of sound like you're either like throwing shit at a wall and hoping something <laughs> hoping it's going to stick, yeah? Um, or yeah. are you just essentially like shooting in midair and hoping yeah. that one of those conversation topics opens up and into something? Um, so those are essentially then what I will look at. Um, I will give you feedback anyway whilst we're going out and about and walking. Yep. Um, I think it would be a bit too harsh for me not to to be like right, just go and approach and I'm just going to film. Because yeah, okay. um, I want you to also see a natural progression in sure. your content as well. Um, I won't actually include any of that in this video. I'm going to just kind of cover that stuff um, when I get to sit down with Bilal again, um, going over the footage, which then you will watch all of the infields. 
um, it will probably be a case of you'll watch it, then we'll do feedback, you'll watch the next one, and feedback, and, and so on. That'll be good. Um, so that will be, I think, the exciting one, because you will see what you look like on that. And then I get to ask the infamous question that I get to ask everyone, which is, how do you feel looking at yourself on camera in, in this position? Because <laughs> um, that, that's always a great... I get, I get surreal experiences from, from that one. It's quite funny. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think that's probably it. I mean, I'll give you a couple of other pointers whilst we're out walking, yep. um, just so you have an idea of like how I feel, um, where I position myself, yep. and how not to worry about me being around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, believe it or not, and this sounds quite funny, but the more you forget that I'm there, the better the sure. situation is. Sure. You know, but we'll, we'll kind of like discuss those things as we're walking. It doesn't really matter for the camera, or at least not for now. Um, and then, yeah, and then that will be essentially it. Well, I, I think my aim with you is to ideally get roughly around about 10, 12 approaches. Yep. Um, so it's not then uh, a stupid number that then guys are going to be sitting watching Yeah, 40 for or 50, hours. yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. at least also it gives you a bit of time to just have your first couple of approaches to warm up. Yeah. You can get yourself more in the mood. Um, and then also... Ideally, you know, I mean, again, it gives you a bit more flexi uh, uh, flexibility with the results as well. Yeah. We don't know what the experiences will be like. We might have an unfortunate circumstance where we get just all rejections. Could be. Or it could be literally every woman you speak to will be happy to have a conversation yeah. with you. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got to kind of just be open to it, but also just making sure we're not going to have like a stupid amount of infields yes. that then is going to just go on forever. I mean, I know, yeah. I know it would be interesting for guys. Um, but yeah, we want to just have some an, an amount of infields um, that yeah kind of has that, um, that, that I don't know what the, the word would be maybe like that magic number sweet spot yeah. the sweet spot there, that, you, there go. you go that's that's the phrase so um, so yeah so I mean other than that I mean I think that's probably everything covered with um, you know the expectations or um, you know what ideally I will be looking at and you know the kind of content that we'll be filming together. Um, I suppose before we get started, I mean, is there any other questions that you have about the, the next, what the next two hours is going to happen? I know, I'm, I'm just a little bit nervous, a little bit excited, so um, I'm, I'm happy to uh, which is stop. Which is normal anyway, and again, if you're someone who's used to going out on your own and now you've got this yes. like cheerleader effect kind of like cheerleader playing effect, out, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry, I won't get the pom-poms out. <laughs> let's hope not, let's hope not. Yeah, that would draw so much. Yeah, that would draw so much, yeah, so much, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But no, I, I want you to enjoy it. Um, you know, with everyone that I do this with, even with any coach I'll tell you as well, I, I'm very laid back with it. And even if at any moment you are feeling stressed or anxious, we can have a breather, yeah. we can talk about stuff, we can go over anything that you need to to help you clear your head. Uh, bear in mind that I am also a trained life coach and also a therapist. Oh, great so I can, I can kind of help with anything where the anxiety does kind of like play out. But by the sounds of it, it's more just a case of just go out, have fun. There you go, my pep talk's coming out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come out, have fun, you can do it. You know, It's all about the motivation. Yeah, literally, yeah. Uh, we'll get like Tony Robbins in the yeah, background yeah, we'll and cheerleading stuff. <laughs> um, but no, most importantly, just just have fun with it. Cool. Um, you know, and uh, don't stress too much about with like the camera and the feedback. We're going to worry about that tomorrow when yep. we meet up again and go over it. Um, and, um, and where I'll take notes and I will give you everything. And of course, I'll, I'll give you a copy of all the footage as well. Yep. Uh, besides, I know it'll all be online, but yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll have your own footage. That's good. Um, That's good. And, um, and as well, don't worry about if you do get numbers and stuff. Anonymity will be given on, on everyone. You know that's a really big thing for yeah. me. Um, so I'll, I'll be muting stuff or privatizing anything that's needed. Um, but other than that, I mean, I think that's probably it. So let's ready? go. Let's go. Yeah. Cool.